Good morning all. Today I thought I'd do a little bit of PIC microcontroller logic I suppose it is because I love uh, PIC microcontroller uh, assembly language programming and well I hope you enjoy it too. Uh, so what I've got here is a 5 volt USB power bank powered uh, PIC microcontroller. It's there and it's driving the NeoPixel ring and the code in the microcontroller is simply telling the LED on the ring to rotate. So how does this work? Well, don't worry, I'm only going to examine the code that actually increments the pointer that points to the LED that I want to light at any one time. Now that's just three instructions. Uh, it does highlight a little bit of um, assembly language logic, so I thought it'd be quite interesting. So let's take a look at those three instructions uh, on the monitor. So here's the subroutine and uh, logically I suppose it's called rotate because it uh, every time it's called it rotates the LED that we want to light one position around that ring of 16 LEDs. Uh, it consists of just these three instructions decrement the file LED position, uh, move a literal value which is uh, hexadecimal 0f into the W register and and the W register with the file LED position. Now you can ignore return because return just takes you back to where this subroutine was called, which is up here. It's in the main loop. I call rotate, which is the subroutine we're gonna look at now. Then I call strip. That's the subroutine which actually fires the 384 pulses out to the LED ring to light them all up or not, as the case may be. And then I call delay so that the rotation happens at a reasonable pace. Now I suppose the instruction that does all the work here is decrement F, dec F. That means decrement the file LED position and put the result of that decrement back into F. You can put the result into W if you don't want to overwrite the file that you've just decremented. It's like a test decrement. You can decrement it without actually writing it back to the file. But here I'm decrementing, decrementing it, writing it back to the file so the file LED position is actually decremented. Now, the issue here is that we have 16 LEDs, so I want to number the LEDs. Well, I'm going to number them 0 to 15. In binary, you generally number from 0. You don't have to. You can start at 1 and number up to 16, but then it takes you, if you look at the binary, it will overflow into the fifth bit. And I don't really want to do that. I want to stick within four bits. So here's a table of numbers from 0 to 15. This is decimal. It's a bit wonky because uh, I couldn't quite fit them all in. I uh, anticipated uh, the amount of paper I'd need wrongly. Uh, here it is in hexadecimal, 0 through to 9, and then A, B, C, D, E, F. And here it is in binary, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. No, I'm not going to read them all out. Uh, but it ends in 1111, which is equivalent to F hexadecimal or 15 decimal. So in terms of binary, I'm using four bits to determine the number uh, which points to the LED that we're actually trying to light at any one time. Four bits in 8-bit registers, because all the registers inside the PIC microcontroller are 8 bits, and that's why we need to do a little bit of logic. Now one question, why am I using decrement when I'm uh, rotating my LED position pointer? Well it's actually because here where I'm sending out the bits to the strip, which I've called strip, I'm also doing a decrement when I'm counting through the 16 LEDs and firing all the bits out to the NeoPixels. Uh, two decrements uh, make a double negative, so it results in an incrementing positive rotation of the pixel on the NeoPixel ring. So let's just accept for the moment that uh, a decrementing of this LED position number results in a positive uh, clockwise rotation of the LED. I mean, I could change this to an increment, this to an increment, and that would give the same effect. It's just easier to do the counting here using a decrement. So what's the issue here? Well, what we're doing is we're decrementing uh, that variable called LED position, which is an 8-bit register. So let's see what happens when we decrement it from 1. This is binary 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. 
hexadecimal one, decimal one. So decrementing that to zero is fine. We've got binary zero there. That's hexadecimal zero, and this is decimal zero. So that's still fine. But what if we decrement this binary zero one more time? Well, that results in binary one, 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 one. Now in hexadecimal, that's FF. In decimal, it's 255. And I don't have 256 pixels. I only have 16. So the decrementing from zero down to FF in hexadecimal, it's the quickest way of saying it, gives us an erroneous result. What I need to do is now change that so that it ends up being 15, so that my number sequence goes uh, from one to zero to 15, and then all the way back down to one and zero again. So in order to get 15, what I need to do is change these first four ones to zeros. And if I make those zeros, I now have 0f hexadecimal, let's update that, 0f hexadecimal, and that gives me 15. Now, strictly speaking, we only need to do this at one point, and that's the point at where we're going from 0 to the next number down, where we get this erroneous result of all 1s, or FF, or 255. But it's actually easier to do this uh, changing of the first four bits here, the, the high order bits, uh, every time round the loop. And that's what these two instructions here do. Move a literal value into W. The literal value is 0F, hexadecimal, and AND, the W register, with the file LED position, putting the result of that ANDing, that logical AND operation, back into the file LED position. Let's see how that works on paper. Into W, I moved 0F, hexadecimal. Well, that is 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. So that is put as a literal value into W. That's then ANDed with whatever is in LED position. Now, in terms of logic within the microcontroller, that actually uses eight AND gates and it ands every bit of W with every corresponding bit of LED position, or F, as we refer to it, file. So there are eight AND gates anding every bit of W with every corresponding bit of the file, F. Eight AND gates, two input AND gates. Now, where do the outputs of these AND gates go? I'll just draw them as little lines here. But where do they actually go? Well, we have a choice. We can either put the outputs of these AND gates back into W, or we can put them back into F. And I've chosen to put them back into F. I've said AND W with the file LED position, and put the result of that AND logical instruction back into the file LED position. If I put a comma W there, I could put the result of that 8-bit uh, AND back into W. So let's say I've just decremented LED position from all zeros, and I've got this erroneous value of all ones. Here it is. I don't want all ones because I only want my numbers to travel between 0 and 15. Let's do the ANDing of four zeros here and four ones there. Well, if you AND a 1 and a 0, you get a 0, so that knocks that down to a 0. That's the case with all these four bits. If you AND a 1 and a 1, of course you get a 1, so that leaves these four bits as 1s. Now, the result of all these ANDs overwrite lead position, so when I execute that AND instruction, I AND what's in W with what's in lead position, and I put the result back into lead position, overwriting it. Now in my code, I do this every time around the loop. Every time I decrement the file lead position, I then put this value 0f into the W register, AND it with f, which is lead position, and put the result in lead position. So every time I decrement lead position, I also mask off the first or the most significant four bits 
and force them to a zero. And so by using this AND mask, I ensure that uh, whenever lead position is zero and it's decremented, it goes to 15. Then it'll go 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, all the way back down to 1, 0, and then 15 again. It'll never go to 255 because I never allow these most significant four bits to be anything other than zeros. So that ensures that this 8-bit file lead position actually works as a 4-bit file because the most significant four bits are always zeros, so they're just not used. But I ensure that they can't be corrupted and spoil the operation of my program. Now, this rotate uh, subroutine counts between 0 and 15. It's held within the bounds of 0 and 15. Interestingly, this one, where I send the bits out to the LEDs, the NeoPixels, counts between 1 and 16. They're actually misaligned. So how do I get around the fact that these are misaligned? Well, of course, there's a fudge. And uh, it's here, it's this increment F lead position into W. So rather than compare uh, LED count with LED position, I compare LED count with an incremented version of LED position. So that goes from 1 to 16. Um, now you can see here that this is, increments the file LED position, but actually puts the result into W. So it doesn't affect LED position, it doesn't actually increment it. It takes the value that's in there, increments that value, and deposits the result in W. It's non-destructive. And that's because this instruction here, decrement file and skip if zero, actually works better if you start at the number you intend to use. So start here at 16 and count down to 1. It doesn't allow you to execute uh, the bulk of the program inside this loop. Uh, for value 0. So this one works 16 to 1, whereas my rotate subroutine works 15 to 0. Now let's make a bit of a change to this. Here in rotate, instead of decrementing the LED position, let's uh, make a few changes. Let's take that line out and replace it by pasting in a few other lines. We've got a rotate, uh, we've got an exclusive or, we've got an and, we've got an add, and then we've got another rotate. Let's see what that does. So let's do a quick build of that, and then program the pick and see what the result is. And the result is this. The LED seems to dart around randomly, and it sort of is random. It's actually a pseudo-random number sequence. All of these LEDs, well actually bar one, this one here never lights for uh, a particular reason. All of these LEDs light in a pseudo-random sequence. Now that sequence is repeated, so it's not true random. And this is done by using something called a linear feedback shift register. Now if you're interested in how the linear feedback shift register works, and it is quite fascinating, let me know in the comments and I'll do another video on what the few instructions uh, that I put in to make this work. It's about five instructions on how they work to produce this linear feedback shift register, a pseudo random number sequence, which results in this LED light darting about. Cheerio.